everybody gizmo here with my landsmate pikachu got my libation hopefully you've got yours too this is like take number 12 <laughs> trying to get this freaking thing working um i apologize for all that but i think we're getting there um i having to make some changes and make a couple of updates to stuff uh trying to get everything happening um and be able to stream properly it's been quite a challenge but i think i've got it figured out now um just have to remember to do this next time when i do this so anyway Welcome. Today we are going to be talking about running your mercenary unit. Uh, some tips and tricks for how to get from uh, the beginning of the game, the beginning of the campaign, right when you're just starting, um, all the way through to the point where you have finished the campaign and now you're working on uh, just running contracts and having some fun. So uh, first things first though, it is beer 30 somewhere or libation 30 somewhere. So cheers, welcome to the stream. Mm-mm. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. Um, so what I want to do is I want to talk about a couple things. Um, the first is that you have got a couple things you got to worry about the, um, when you're starting the game off. Um, the main thing is you don't have a ton of money, and um, you're going to have to figure out how to manage all of that. So uh, right now, if you look at our um, our finances, we have 980,000 C bills. We're blowing through 240,000 C bills a month which gives us about four months until we're done, right? Yep, about that, just a little bit over, like 20K over. <laughs> so I've only got four months of burn for our mercenary unit before we end up having some issues. Um, we can see that by by right here, we only see we only have four, four dots filled. There's um, uh, 18 total that you can fill up. Um, there's 29 days until our first financial payment is due. So every 30 days you are required to pay your monthly fees. Um, right now that's, that's a quarter of a mil and we have to try to figure out how to make that happen with what we got. So the first thing here, let's go ahead and check out our finances real quick. This is going to show us how much money we're spending and where we're spending it. So you can see here we have four mech warriors um, other than us. Uh, other than ourselves so like we ourselves don't cost anything the commander of the unit doesn't cost a dime which is awesome um, but we have four more mech warriors um, decker behemoth glitch and medusa they each cost about 20 20 20 26 to 28 thousand c bills a month um, so a total amount we're paying 110 thousand c bills a month in salaries okay uh, we also have some operating expenses they are an interest loan payment to the bank of 70 thousand c bills of buttload of money every month that we're paying on interest um, and then we also have five battle mechs that are currently available ready for us to use in a mission um, each of them costing 12,000 sea builds um, that does not change based on whether you got a 20 ton mech like a locust or a 100 ton mech like an atlas it costs you 12,000 um, if you're operating at normal which is this number which is this right here so depending on what you've decided for your expense level, um, all the way through, you know, restrictive and I forget what the, the bottom one is, <clears throat> all the way through extravagant, which is the highest one, um, you can increase your or decrease your morale based upon how much more money you want to throw at the problem, in essence. Um, normal gives you no morale effect, positive or negative, but um, it does, um, but no matter what you're spending here, the cost for your operating expenses is 12 grand. Uh, no, I, I apologize, it's not that. It is gonna be 12 grand regardless of the size of the mech if you're operating at normal. If you're operating at extravagant, then it's that value, which I think is like 36,000 um, or 38.5 or something, and it's that for every mech. So the size of the mech doesn't change the amount of the operating cost, um, whether it's 20 ton or up to 100 ton. But your um, the your spend your expense level um, again going from restrictive or aesthetic all the way up through extravagant that will change how much money you're going to be spending um, on each mech. So that's that's the key difference. So I want to be I want to be clear there. Okay, so right now we're spending 130,000 C bills just to keep our five mechs, which are 60 grand and our bank loan at 70 grand. So we're spending 130 just for that and we're spending 110 on our salaries, okay? Um, with our current spend, we've only got 240,000. Your first mission, sadly, doesn't go very well. 
and you end up with no payment and you end up with damage. In fact, if we go look at the mech bay here, I'll show you the mech bay real quick. You'll see all four of our battle mechs are really damaged. Um, this one has no armor anywhere, front or back, except to the head. This one has no armor, front or back, except to the head. Um, this one has no center torso armor, front or back. Um, and this one has no center torso or um, front or back or left leg armor. So we're going to have to make some repairs. Each of these repairs is going to cost us money and time. So that's the challenge that we have. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have to spend this because I can't go into battle with these the way they are. Okay. So I'm going to repair these guys. So that's going to take 12.3 12 and take five days. Okay. That's what we got to do. We got to do it. This is going to cost the 3,900 and take two days. Awesome. Okay. This will take us 21K and take seven days. Ouch. And this one's going to take 18, five and take nine days. Also, ouch. All right, so what I wanna do though, is I want to structure, um, and this is kind of funny, because this comes from my day job, Lord knowing all this stuff. We wanna structure our work uh, load in sh cost of delay. So right now we know is that the shortest things are gonna get us our battle mechs faster. So even though it's gonna take us the, the full amount of time, if for some reason we had to go to, to battle we had to go fight, and we couldn't, let's say, get the blackjack, which takes us nine days. The We could go in 12, 14 days, okay? So then 14 days, we could actually field the lance, all right? Ideally, we would take 23 days and field our better lance, but right now, we, you know, we can at least get everything done and do it as quickly as possible so we can get our battle mechs as, as um, battle ready as early as possible. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to order these in the order of how long it's going to take to actually complete all the work. All right. So there we go. So now, um, so now we've done that, and now we're only at nine hundred twenty-four thousand three hundred Z bills. So we've we've blown through you know uh, fifty-six, almost fifty-six k, just to fix our battle next from the first fight. We haven't done anything yet. We didn't get paid. We didn't get anything. We're already down 56k. What the heck, right? <laughs> okay. The good thing is we have 29 days, as you can see from up here, before we have to make our next payment. So hopefully we can get ourselves a contract that's going to pay us before the 29 days, and help us get some more money in our coffers so that we can keep that 240 at bay. So we've got to make at least 240 in order to get another month worth of reserves, cash reserves. Okay. So. Um, Let's go ahead and look at, just real quick, we're gonna look at a couple other things though. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the hiring hall. Okay, so right now we are spending 110K for our mech warriors. Um, we could hire some cheaper ones, all right? Uh, this guy right here, oh, I mean, he makes 24,000 a month. That's a little bit less than what we got. Um, ooh, what is this guy? What is that thing? That is kind of cool. Oh, just MRB rating is too low, okay, all right. Um, yeah, this guy is 22k a month. Receiving this guy is 18 you. a month. So hey, look, here's a guy, 18,000 a month. So we can hire him. Um, of course, you're gonna, we're gonna get what we pay for, which is a gunnery of two, a guts of two, a tactics of two, and a pilot of three. Not a very good mech warrior, but he's cheap. Um, we would have to dismiss one of ours in order to do that, in order to really um, save any money. Um, we've got five mech warriors, including ourselves. Um, right now, um, you can see like Clifford doesn't make any money. Um, Behemoth though makes 28k a month, um, but she's got three, four, five, two. That's pretty good. Um, glitch here, five gunnery. That's pretty good. I um, mean, we want to hold on to that. So um, uh, we could spend some. We could, we could drop some money off. Uh, by dismissing one of these, you can just click this dismiss button and actually, you know, uh, get that, drop that mech warrior from your roster. Um, or we can say, you know what, we're fine as is, let's just go ahead and stick with it, which I think is what we're going to do. All right, so um, so that's the hiring hall. And the other thing I want to point about the hiring hall is that we are going to be, um, so right now there's see this reputation is a 10% price increase. That means that we are not well known enough with this planetary government for them to give us any kind of a discount. 
um, or to not bump our prices. So because of that, we're actually paying more for hiring a mech warrior or hiring, you know, or, or doing any, you know, kinds of uh, 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 purchases of weapons and stuff in the store. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so for this guy right here, you can see he costs, oh, let's say, let's see a little enforcement, you. okay. So he's 18,000 a month salary, but there's the, but in order to recruit him, we have to spend 29,700. That's because he would normally only be 27,000, but because of the 10% increase, we have to spend another 2,700, so we're at 29,700. We're paying a premium to hire to hire this guy because of our reputation. So the better our reputation with the planet, planetary government, or with a faction, whether it's the um, or the Oregons or the um, or the Oregans or the Liao or Federate, Federate Sons or Marek or whomever it is, the better our reputation, the better the pricing we're going to get. Um, eventually we're going to end up with a not a 10% any price increase but a you know we'll just be paying going rate and then if we get even better we'll end up with a 10% discount which is really good. So um, anyway so that's kind of where that is. The other thing that we have is the store and the store we had the exact same thing these price increases. So for instance as AC5 you see that value right there underneath that. It says that it's a hundred thousand. Well, we're going to spend one hundred and ten because we're getting dinged ten percent because they don't know us from a hole in the wall. So um, we're going to spend more for these things, and so we want to be careful about all of that. Um, the same thing with the Panther and Spider. You know, for buying a partial mech pieces, those are going to be more expensive than they would be normally. In this case, the you know, the thirty six grand that we're spending. Uh, for that Panther, instead of 360, it's 396 because of the 10% increase. Um, something else to keep in mind really quickly about this. If you have salvaged parts of a mech, let's say that you've got two thirds of a Panther and you really want a Panther, you could come here and you can buy this partial mech salvage. See right there, partial mech salvage. That'll give you one third of a mech. It doesn't give you the whole mech. You're not buying a Panther for 400K. You're buying one third of a Panther for 400K, which means that a Panther is gonna cost you just under 1.2 million, which is more than we've got right now. So we couldn't buy a Panther right now if you wanted to. Um, but if you, let's say you've got two thirds of an awesome or two thirds of a, of a Griffin, and you find a griffin part you could go get that one third of a griffin and then build that griffin and that way you'd have that mech available for you quick caveat there if you get three of three your mech tech yang will build that mech and make it ready for you immediately put it into a mech bay and make it ready for you now if you don't have a mech bay available let's say you let's say you've got a you've got six berths and you've got six mechs and then you get three of three for a griffin so now you can build a griffin but you don't have space for it you have the choice of taking one of your mechs and putting it in storage at which point we strip all the armor and all of the weapons off of it put them in storage and put that mech into storage that mech no longer costs you any upkeep so any mechs in storage so if i were to come into here into our mech bay and i were to take this locust and stick him in storage just by clicking this button down here then it will strip all the all the equipment and put it into our storage and it will put the mech into storage and i will not spend twelve thousand sievels a month for that locust so if i never use locusts which i don't then i will put that into storage and so are you sure you want to unready and store this mech and the answer is yes i'm positive i will never use a locust I want to stick it into storage. Now, this gives me two choices. Number one, like I said, I'm not spending any money to upkeep it. It's in storage. Number two, I can sell it now. I can't sell a ready to mech. I can sell a stripped mech chassis. So that can be really helpful if I go back over here to the store and I say, okay, I'd like to sell my mech part here. I can sell my, my locust for 163,840. Um, those anything that you're selling is not affected by your reputation so it's whatever you're wherever you are you can sell stuff for the same price whether you have a good reputation or not or an unknown reputation it doesn't change your cost 
or your your the price that you can get for selling something. Um, I did verify this earlier, so it doesn't matter what you're selling. Um, it, this will be one sixty three eight forty no matter where you go to sell it, um, which is really kind of nice because it means that you're not trying to like take a whole bunch of salvage and get somewhere where you have a good reputation in order to sell it for the maximum amount of money. You can sell it wherever and you're going to get the same amount of money. So that's really good for you as a mercenary commander. All right. We can also sell our equipment. We can also sell our weapons. We can sell anything, really. Um, this will become really important when, we're, when we are getting a lot of salvage from a lot of contracts. So some of the contracts you're going to run um, and some of the achievements you're going to get are going to say, like, you know, just take salvage. Just, you know, you know so when you're negotiating your contracts, you may, you may say, well, I want to get more money or I want to get more salvage or I want to split it even, you know, evenly between both of those you are going to end up with a lot of salvage. A lot of that salvage is going to be medium lasers. It just is. I just sold in my other campaign like 60 medium lasers. I had 80. I sold 60 of them, okay? <laughs> I had a lot of medium lasers. I don't need 80 medium lasers. I don't even need 20 medium lasers. I need like five, maybe six or seven, right? So um, even with all the mechs that I'm fielding, you know, if I, you know, there's a hunchback variant that has six medium lasers. Okay, fine. If I got to field that guy, I probably want six laser medium lasers in my uh, inventory to replenish in case all of those get destroyed. Okay, um, but the likelihood of that happening is pretty low. That said, um, if I wanted to, then I would want to say, okay, fine. Let's at least have enough stock available in our inventory so that we can do that. The other thing that you're going to see in here is that you can buy a bunch of ammo. So here I can buy, you know, any of the AC ammo, I can buy LRM ammo, I can buy SRM ammo, short range and long range missile ammo, and machine gun ammo. I have never had to buy ammo ever, ever. I don't know whether I do a really good job of managing what I get. I don't know if I've gotten the you know the luck of the Irish when it comes to getting my salvage and I always get enough ammo to replenish what I spent. I never had to buy ammo ever. So um, sort of keep that in mind. Um, and that's including like AC20, which I have one of now that I use an Atlas. Um, so the things that you're less apt to get, sometimes you still get some. Um, so and you can also request it. Um, you can, you know, say, well, you know what? I'm low on AC-20 ammo. It costs 44,000 C-bills. I really don't want to spend 44,000 or even 40,000 C-bills to get the AC-20 ammo. So if I see that pop up, I might just say, you know what? I'll just take that. Because AC-20 ammo at 40 grand is, you know, going to be less than a, than a medium laser. All right. So it's if you're going to get equipment, that's going to do better for you from a usability perspective and a cost perspective and if you had to buy if you had to buy a medium laser that's going to cost you more than buying the ammo that said if you're trying to sell it then a medium laser is only six grand okay so if you have a lot of medium lasers and you don't want to do it then don't bother but if you wanted to sell your ac20 ammo you know that's even less so the challenge here is that you want to try to find ways that you can sort of maximize um, your income based upon the kinds of salvage you're going to get. By far, the most money you're going to make is by selling mech chassis. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, it's the locusts, the 163,000. You know, if you're talking about a Centurion, we're talking like, you know, 500,000, or maybe 350, 380. Um, the heavier the mech, the more it's going to command from a price perspective. So you just want to be aware of that. Um, and, um, also, the, the, the better the weapon system, the more it's going to sell for LRM 10, 15 grand. Um, you know, if you're trying to buy one, it's also going to be a lot more expensive. And LRM 10 is going to be 165,000. So you're going to sell it for about a tenth of what you can buy it for. That's just kind of the way it's going to work, right, Pikachu? Yeah, that's the way it's going to work. So, all right. So all that aside, You'll pay more for stuff. You're going to pay more for your equipment. You're going to pay more for ammo. You're going to pay more for weapons. And you're going to pay more for mech warriors um, in those places where you have that price increase. The one thing I do want to talk about, though, is equipment real quick. 
Um, there are different different kinds of equipment available at different times. Um, anything with a plus after it means it's better than the base one. So if you have like a heat sink plus, that means it's gonna dissipate more heat than a regular heat sink, good deal. If you have a plus plus, that's even better than a plus. And a plus plus plus, which is the best that I've seen so far, is even better than the plus pluses. So um, you wanna sometimes just simply hit the store to see what's available because some of these places that you're that you can get to although you can't really get to them at the beginning of the game because you're kind of stuck in within four star systems um you're stuck between um Urukrin, which i think is now bellerophon um alloway and uh detroit so those are kind of the places you get to go and that's it at least at the beginning of the game um, as you complete some missions, you're going to end up being able to go beyond that. And really good place to go, I will tell you right now, is this place called Clough's Stand. Now, the reason it's a good place is because it has a mega city, it has a black market, it has manufacturing, it has rich, it has a moderate population. Um, even though it has a periphery, periphery level of civilization, it has the other things. So the more um normal the more the, the closer you get to an inner sphere world from in the periphery the better the equipment's going to be the better the stuff you're going to have the better the contracts all those kind of things so as much as possible you can try to go to places like that if you go there's one place i think it might be here no oh here's another one travel hub okay it's got a small population but it has a it has a black market and former star league presence so it has possibilities for things uh, here we go token population rocky world high gravity primitive civilization uninhabited all right nothing that may not even have a store that may not even have a hiring hall okay there may be nothing there at ys glory so you want to kind of think about that when you're trying to plan out sort of where you're going to go what you're going to do it's highly possible that where you are or where you're going to end up doesn't have anything that you're going to need not every system has a store. Not every um, store has stuff that's gonna help you. I once lost an AC5 and I spent probably, I don't know, 40 days looking for a new AC5, just trying to go around to different systems, trying to find one that actually was gonna sell me an AC5 somewhere. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking at stuff. All right. All right, by the way, this is pretty much the whole map of the game. Um, so there is nothing north of this and west of this or east of this, which is kind of sad because where I want to go is like way up that way. <laughs> I really want to go far beyond the Capellan Confederation and the um, uh, Free Worlds League. I want to go to Lyman commonwealth i want to go to where my character came from i want to go to where my people are and i haven't been able to do that so um the good thing is you can go look at everything that's on the map the problem is the map is not very large it's just this little section i'm really hoping that in a future version they're just going to open the whole thing up um i would be perfectly happy playing the game and doing just any of the missions and i'm talking to you hairbane screams doing any of the missions and just have access to the entire inner sphere to be in the Lyran commonwealth fighting the uh, draconis combine i would be a happy camper even if it takes me three three million sea bills to get there and all i get to do is run basic contract missions and improve my standing with the Lyran commonwealth i would be happy to do that in fact i want to do that so please let me do that right now i don't want to go to liao and the Federated Suns planets that are available to me suck. So um, I'm kind of stuck having to go to the uh, Free Worlds League, and there's only like what, like 10 system, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 maybe? Yeah, it's, uh, it blows. It's like, I don't want to go to Liao. I really don't want to go to Liao. So please don't make me go to Liao. Thank you. All right, now that my pitch to Harebrained is over, um, so you can click on any map, any, any star system on the map. Let's see what's there. Okay, this is uh, Cal Calcerain, 
manufacturing, mining, periphery level, moderate population though, so that's not too bad. Um, as we get closer over here, that is a token population, it's a Terran world, primitive civilization. Uh, this manufacturing looks good. Inner sphere level, ooh, inner sphere level civilization. So yeah, a Villanueva um, looks like a pretty good place to go if you can get there. So um, uh, this one, periphery level, moderate, but it has manufacturing, which is kind of good. It has moons, which is also good. Uh, that's inner sphere level, small population, agriculture, former Star League presence. So you know, there's some places you might want to go. You're like, you know what? There's actually going to be some valid, some validity and valid reasons to go to some of these places um, that of course is you know like 12 jumps away so that's going to be a buttload of money and i can't go there because i have a debt i have to pay in order before i can do that so i'm stuck within these four systems and i have to run contracts within these four in order to start this whole thing off so i that's what i'm going to have to be doing um, which is fine and that's where you're going to start the game all right so going back out um, the other thing you want to kind of keep in mind, and we sort of saw this a little bit with the um, the hiring hall, is your mercenary review board uh, rating. So uh, right now, um, I have a 15 level rating, which means that I, they, they really don't know me from a hole in the wall. Um, as I do more missions, then I will begin to see more and more uh, benefits accrue, and I'll, I'll go up and I'll start accruing points here. The higher I get, the better the mech warriors I can hire. Although by that point, you're already spending probably 50 grand a month on some of your mech warriors because they're really good. Um, there's five different levels of mech warrior ability. Um, there's recruit, which is the lowest one. There's regular, veteran, elite, and master. Master means that you've got a level 10 skill in something, and I'll show you one of those in a minute. Um, but you're gonna pay a lot more for a mech warrior who's doing that. And if you change your expense level from normal to say extravagant, then that also like triples the amount of money or the salary you're given to these guys. Um, so that can go down quite quickly. Um, so like I said, just keep an eye on your finances. Um, I have actually had it where I've been in my last month, a few days before I've owed my bills and I had no money. But I ran a mission, I got paid more than I needed in order to make my um, my obligations for the month, and then, and less and more than it cost to fix my max after that. So overall, we were able to make some, some progress, some headway. Um, the other thing you wanna watch out for is that later in the game, you're gonna have an opportunity to start um, fixing up a derelict ship that you find. Some of those uh, investments consume gigantic amounts of money, um, like two and a quarter million and half a million, and it's kind of so. Even after you hit like let's say six, seven, nine million C bills in your reserves, you do one of those things, suddenly you're down to you know you go from nine to six and a half. All right, so you want to be careful. Um, you still want to be managing your money and being careful. Now there's one really good thing to keep in mind here. There are things called priority missions and they're the main campaign. When you do your priority missions, they pay extremely well. Um, so let me show you an example of a contract that does not pay extremely well. Um, so here's this aggressive intrusion, all right? It's gonna pay us a maximum of 205,000 sea bills, all right? That is less than our monthly expenditures. We would need to do at least two of these in order to make our make a month's worth of payment, right? But let's go ahead and negotiate it and just see what it looks like here. So uh, right now I'm gonna get 100, so if I keep this as normal, I'm gonna get 112,200 sea bills, all right? And I'm gonna get one, I get to pick one salvage item and I get a total of six. If I bump this up, to here, I can get up 158, which is again still less than my 228, and I get one. I get to pick one out of four total. So, without saying is that you'll get a list of all the salvage at the end of the, at the end of the the mission, and then you'll get to pick one of those and confirm it, and then the other three will be assigned randomly. So you'll get ammunition, you'll get medium lasers, you might get some other cool stuff, but in general you're going to get crap. So. Um, don't take it around with you. Don't just carry it around forever. Sell it. 
make some money off of it. That's part of what salvage does for you. It's designed to not just help you rebuild your mechs, but also to recoup some of the losses for rebuilding your mechs, repairing, repairing them. All right, so that is the gist of how you start the game off, okay? So you have to be really careful with your money. You've got four months. That should be enough to get you started. The benefit of those priority missions, they pay extremely well, like 1.2 mil, 1.5 mil, 1.7 mil. So you're gonna get a lot of money out of them, enough to run your mercenary unit for a few months at whatever um, rate you're running it. So just be a little bit aware of that. All right, so now let me show you my other campaign and I can, I can show you some of the other things here. All right, so, oh. Let's get this one, and I want to go to. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, we'll go to here, Heratitis. Okay. So, this is my current post campaign, just out there playing around doing mercenary missions unit. Okay, so this is my main merc unit. Um, and we'll see. Well, I'll show you kind of what's going on here. So. Cheers. Mm. All right. It is very late local time and I need to get some sleep. But I want to do this so we can get you guys squared away so you can at least start doing some stuff. Oh, yeah. Founded in 324 by Grace and Carlisle. The Great Death Legion. Yeah, Grace and Death Carlisle. Um, the thing about um, some of these mercenary units like the Kell Hounds or the Great Death Legion they come from the novels about Battletech. They're not part of the source, the canon source at all. They're not in the Mech Warrior book. They aren't in the, the, the house books. None of that stuff that was printed had any of these things in it. People who wrote the books, which is mostly uh, Michael Stackpole for some of the, for the, a lot of the, the stuff, and he's actually written all of the, the novellas that are part of the, the game that we're doing now. Um, uh, for the Kickstarter backers uh, get, get access to all the novellas and uh, he created uh, Kell Hounds but uh, Great Death Legions was from another author I've actually got the books upstairs in my, in my library um, but they're um, that was again just created as part of uh, one of the novels in the Battletech universe um, my mercenary unit um, the 12 Star Guards was actually one of the ones from the book, which is why I picked it, because I was trying to figure out what mercenary unit I worked for. And it said, well, how Steiner has these mercenary units. So I said, 12 Star Guards it is. And then I found out about it, and I read about it, and I'm like, oh, I like these guys. This is really cool. And nobody wrote any books about them at all, and I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And then I found out that somebody did write a book about it, but it was about the clans, and it was in essence. And then the 12th Guards, 12 Star Guards showed up, and then they died. It's like, oh... That's kind of sad. That's kind of pathetic. I don't like that. I really don't like that. So that kind of sort of helped foster my hatred of the clans, but there you are. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at my stuff and I'll kind of show you what's going on. So right now, um, I think I'm actually on a planet that I don't have a very good relationship with. I don't. So we're going to go to a different planet that I do have a good relationship with. Um, so we can see that Waldry. We like Waldry. Waldry's a good place. Okay. So we're going to head off to Waldry. Um, but I will show you, um, so like right now the, in the store, I have a 10% price increase because of where I am, okay? Um, and because I went to the store, I ended up um, pausing the game. All right, let's create authentic Triple F burgers because I have a hydroponics bay because I'm awesome. Okay, all right. Um, this is the ship I was talking about, that you, the derelict that you find that you can then improve. I have improved everything on this i've spent 20 million c bills probably building this puppy up um getting it squared away yeah it, it's a chunk of change um but you get paid a lot when you do the priority missions and as they get further along you end up getting a lot more of those priority missions and a lot more money um and like i said you blaze through it but you also get some of the stuff out of it okay so seven days to weldry here we go I'm going to change my little logo. It's my little dragon. It's Clifford's Dragon Slayers, which is the name of my company. 
in the 12 star guard seventh regiment you know that's all right okay all right so let's go look at the store real quick and you can see here i got 10 percent discount because i have a good reputation with these guys um so my ac5 instead of being a hundred thousand or a hundred and ten thousand is only ninety thousand um but again selling my stuff there's no price difference here you know my ac10 sells for 14336 here sells for 14336 in um, heritatis where i just was so there's no difference there in pricing the that when you sell stuff you're gonna get the a, a good price for it regardless of where you are which is very helpful buying stuff you're gonna pay the premium or get the discount depending on your relationship with the planetary government so um that said um this guy, I'm blowing through 878, uh, 876 um, a, a, a month, which is a chunk of change. Um, my finances look like this. I'm spending 479,000 in, in um, uh, costs. I have, um, uh, I think I've got 11 mech warriors, 12, 12 mech warriors. Let's find out. I have 12. I have 24 births available, but I've only I've got 12 mech warriors that are available to me. Um, and like Behemoth, um, I'm paying her 50 grand um, uh, a month. Uh, Glitch actually is even better, I'm paying her 51. Um, but your your character, you pay zero. You don't have to worry about having to pay yourself a salary, so you don't count, which is really cool. That said, you start the game with four mech warriors, uh, Glitch, Behemoth, Decker, and Medusa, and you can field them in a lance, uh, four battle mechs, every mission and, and just have that be your team. Or you can always field yourself if possible and so forth and so on. So anyway, so that's kind of where that, that team comes from. Um, let's go to the mech bay and I'll show you. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff that's in uh storage right now so um I, oh hold on a second let me show you that so my finances if i look at my finances so you can see here um i've got you know a thunderbolt a trebuchet and atlas 2 you know thunderbolt 65 uh tons twelve thousand. atlas 2 100 tons twelve thousand. shadowhawk 55 tons twelve thousand. kentaro 50 tons twelve thousand everything costs 12 grand if i change again if i if i change the expense level then the prices will get bumped up. Apparently now we're using the really good lubricant or the gold-plated brush or whatever. I don't know what we're doing with it, but we're doing things and it's costing us more because of, the, I guess, the quality of the parts or the, the care, the amount of care we're giving these things. Um, we're coddling our battle mechs. Regardless, it does cost more. Um, you also pay your your mech warriors more. Everything else costs more money. So I go from like 876 to about 1.5 mil if I bump up the expense level to extravagant. I can also pull it all the way back down to like the lowest level that I can, which is restrictive, um, and that will reduce my morale. But it's also going to save us a buttload of money. I think it pretty much halves your costs. So be aware that when you have to make your monthly payments, you have the option at that point of deciding, am I going to go two levels below normal, one level, be at normal, one above or two above. I have been above normal once, never below normal. I never had to go, I never had to restrict um, any of my expenses based upon you know, not being able to make something. But you can only do that when you're filing your report. So what you first thing is that you see you have to file your report based upon where you are today. So if I'm at normal, I have to my next payment will be eight seventy six six fifty. I can't change that. So if I have less than that in the bank, I'm I'm foobard. Um but if I can make that payment, then what I can do is for the next month I can decide higher or lower or stay the course at normal depending on which one makes the most sense for me so just be aware of that okay so let's go back to, let's go to the mech bay here and here's my bays so you can see i've got um 10 mechs out i've got um four in this four in this bay three in this bay three in this bay um and it's a mix everything from 50 tons all the way up to 100 tons um, they tend toward the assault side, the heavy and assault side. Um, but there are a couple in here that are, um, 
uh, a little more flexible in the medium range, the high end of the medium range. 55 tons is the heaviest medium mech you can have. That said, I have quite a few mechs in storage. Uh, I have two Panthers, I have two Vindicators, two Centurions, an Enforcer, a Wolverine, and a Blackjack. Um, I also have parts of mechs. Um, you can see here I've got two-thirds of part of a Banshee. I've got one-third of an Awesome, one-third of a Cataphract, um, one part of a Victor, um, one part of an Orion, you know, two parts of an Awesome, uh, but a different Awesome. You see this is the Awesome 8Q. This is the Awesome 8T. So two different variants, and so those variants matter. So if you only if you've got an AWS AT and you get some salvage from that, that is not compatible with the AWS AQ. So just be aware of that. Um, now the BLR1G is like standard Battle Master. The other ones are differences. You know, like the Victor, the standard Victor has a um, AC20 on it, but this one. Um, I think that one might actually be the standard Victor. There is another variant that they have in the game that has six medium lasers. So, um, again, depending on what mechs you're fighting, upon what salvage you get, all those kinds of things, you can end up acquiring different parts of these things. I can also go to the store and see do they have anything that I can buy that is stuff that I would, that can help me get a mech. And the answer is they don't have any mechs for sale. Darn. So um, we got to figure out maybe what we you know maybe there's somewhere else we can go um, that might actually have some mech parts that are going to help us build one of those mechs. We can also sell our mechs. I mean, like you know, for instance, um, you know, I can sell uh, one of my Centurions. That's 430k right there, um, just for selling one of them. I've got two. I can sell a Panther. It's 286. I've got two of those. I have two Vindicators. You know, so I can, I could probably make you know almost. Uh, a million C bills just from selling three duplicate mechs. Um, but the good thing is that these mechs don't cost anything to maintain and in storage, and they don't, uh, and to, uh, to build them up doesn't require a lot. Now, one thing I do want to do, um, I am going to be going through and creating um, a video showing all of the standard loadouts that I'm aware of for the mechs that I've got so that if for some reason you store a mech and you put a mech in storage and you want to bring it back out again when you do that it takes about a day to get it from storage to ready but then it's just an empty chassis okay it's got some arm, some base armor on it but now what well now what you want to do is you want to figure out how we're going to build it up what kinds of weapon systems is this thing going to have now you get to pick and choose some of these things but there are some standard loadouts based upon the battle tech universe the, the standard loadout stuff that i'll go through with you and i'll post up a video and i'll post it here if i get it when i get it done it'll be right up above us um, i'll post a link to it and then um you can go check that out and then at least see some of the base um uh the base loadouts for these things so that when you're loading these things out you're like well how do i so i've got a vindicator but i don't know what goes where um, you know, and I'll, 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 show, I'll show this to you. So let's go back to the mech bay. Um, and again, this costs some money, so you want to be careful about, you know, sticking things into storage that you don't need to stick into storage. But if you've got a full mech bay and you want to get another mech, you're going to have to put something in storage. So let's pull out, let's, let's pull out a Panther, because the Panther's a pretty easy one. Um, I know the Panther pretty well, and um, one of the characters... Uh, in my lands, actually, pilots on, uh, a panther. All right, so it's going to take us one day to get this panther. So let's go ahead and we'll come back over here and we'll just go one day. Da -da -da. And now he says all work orders are complete. Great. So we go back to the mech bay. Now that our panther is ready, it needs to be outfitted. Okay, because right now you can see there's a little warning here. It says you can't field this mech if it doesn't have any weapons on it. Okay, great. So now what we've got to do is we've got to figure out what we're going to put in this guy. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to filter these weapon systems because I only want to look at energy weapons. And we're going to put a PPC++. Now again, the plus means it's better. Plus plus means it's better than plus. And plus 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 is the best of, best of all that I've seen. So we're going to add a PPC, particle projection cannon, to his right arm. You see here there's one of four energy weapon hard points. Um, this tells you where all the hard points are on the mech. It tells you there's... there's one um, missile system that goes here, but that's it. 
So you've got the PPC and you've got a missile system. So let's go ahead and bring up the missiles. I happen to know it's an SRM-4, so I'm going to build this guy out right now. And I'm going to give him some ammo to go with that SRM, because that would be nice, right? Okay. Now, you look up here, you see we're at 30 or 35 tons. You're like, okay, so where's the 5 tons coming from? Uh, good question. The Panther jumps. In the original game, the Panther went 464, which meant that it could, it could jump 4 hexes. Um, not very far, but, you know go kind of far. Alright, so there we go. So now we've got three jump, uh, four jump jets, which is the maximum. If I try to add another one, it will tell me you can't add another one. Uh, the maximum number of jump jets for the mech have been allocated. So it can only take four jump jets. And I put uh, my SRM ammo in my center torso because um, right torso and left torso have left less ammo, less armor. You can see 50 points versus 70 points. Um, and you can blow up a torso without destroying a mech. But if you blow up a torso, there's a chance you're going to end up with an ammo explosion if there's any ammo in there. If you get an ammo explosion, you're almost guaranteed to incapacitate the mech. So if you put it in the center torso, once there's no center torso, there's no mech. So if the center torso ever gets destroyed, there's, there's your mech is in anyway. So if you put your arm, you put your ammo in the center torso, then it doesn't matter if you have no center torso or it gets blown up because it, your, your your mech is gone anyway. So um, just as an FYI, kind of keep that in the back of your mind when you're refitting your mechs, you may want to consider that. That, I believe, is not where the ammo is in the standard Panther loadout. And I will, again, I'll, I'll do that for you. I have all the resource books. I've got um, like you know, everything back from this one which is uh, Star League level. This is 2750. So this is the Star League technical readout. I've got the one from 3025, which is what we're talking about here. I've got clan stuff. But I will go through and load out all the mechs that I have, and I'll even try to purchase some extra ones um, just so I can show as many different uh, loadouts for you guys as possible so that you can actually see how this stuff is supposed to work. Okay. All right. But we've still got three tons left. Well, what's that got to be? Well, what it comes down to is if you look this up, and if you go to, if you look for the Battletech Wiki, you will find um, that there's a place called Sarna.net that has a Battletech Wiki. I've actually contributed to it, so I recommend it highly. I'll put a link uh, below in the in the uh, description. But um, you can look up a Panther on the Battletech Wiki, and it will tell you how many heat sinks does it have. And in this particular case, it's going to tell you that it has 13 heat sinks. And you're like, well, holy crap, I can't add 13. I've only got, you know, each heat sink is one ton. It's telling me right there, tonnage is one. It takes one slot. I've only got three tons left. Ah, yes. Because in the original game, a battle mech had 10 heat sinks sort of by default based upon the engine shielding around the fusion reactor inside your battle mech. So if you had no heat sinks extra on your mech, you had 10 heat sinks. You would always dissipate 10 heat every turn regardless. So 13 means you've got three more heat sinks. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put our heat sinks, we're gonna put one here, one here, and you know what, let's put one on his right torso. Why not, okay? So now we've got 35 tons of 35 tons, so zero tons remaining. And um, we've got uh, the, the, the normal layout. When you bring it, when you bring the chassis back from storage, they're going to lay it out with the normal armor um, system. So um, you can do all that stuff. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just simply add everything in, and then it should all work. Um, that said, um, I think it was the Vindicator does not quite line up with how the Vindicator in the books, uh, in the technical readout lines up. So I got to figure that one out. Uh, I got to see where the where the deviations are because the Vindicator. I, I tried that. I, I just looked at the, the tentacle readout and I'm like, well, it says put this in the right torso, this in the left torso, and I'm doing all that stuff, and it's like, I've still got like four tons left. What frack? So um, I want to take a look at it and kind of figure out why I obviously missed something. I want to find out what I missed. I'm guessing heat sinks because they're really easy to overlook. Um, the other thing that I want to point out real quick um, here, which is not only to do with managing your mercenary unit from a financials perspective, but does have to do with bringing items back from from uh, storage, where you're going to put things and that kind of stuff, is um, 
in the board game, your your heat sink location mattered from a how you dissipated heat. If you walked into level one water, that was only waist deep. Any heat sinks that were under the water dissipated heat at twice the normal level. So if you had two heat sinks here below the water, then I gener I would dissipate two more heat every turn. Um, and if I had this one above the water and the, and the right torso, then it wouldn't, right? That doesn't seem to count with this game. It seems like if you're in the water, if I put 10 heat sinks in my torso and I go into the water and it's only waist deep, I double my dissipation. Um, so it's nice because it's not something, it's, it's kind of like, you know, they're not trying to figure out, well, are they on your legs or when they torture you're just like, well, you just, you know, you, whatever heat sinks you have, it just doubles their effectiveness because you're in the water. Cool. But it's a little bit different. So just be kind of aware of that. Um, it's not like a bad thing. It's just, it's a thing. So um, just kind of be aware of it. All right. So now we've got our, we've got our, our mech. So here's what it's going to take. So it tells us that our panther is going to take us uh, 3,800 sea bills, almost 3,900. It's going to take us four days to do all sorts. So we've got to install a right arm component, install a center torso component, left leg, right leg, center torso. You know, all this is going to do all of these things in order to get it fixed. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. And so that will give us one working panther Bob in four days, okay? Fully hard. stocked, ready to go, the whole nine yards. So that's kind of cool. Um, but I think that should be good enough for now for you guys to get at least get started. Um, again, like I said, just make sure you're tracking your finances. Make sure you've got more than, you know, a couple of months worth of reserves. Um, <clears throat> when you get into um, fixing the derelict, the Argo, You'll see here, I've pretty much done everything. I've got all my recreation stuff. I got all my mech bays. I've got all my training modules, all my med bays. I've got everything. This is a star, almost a Star League era ship. Okay, really cool and nice to have, um, but very expensive. <laughs> so everything on here probably costs about 20 million sea bills to get everything repaired. Um, and some of those things were like, I have 2 million sea bills and I want to spend 500,000 or 450,000 to do X. Yeah, I'm going to spend that money. <laughs> it's like, and then I'm going to find, a, try to find a contract that's going to pay me more than 450K to offset the cost of that repair, of that work. So, um, just kind of be thinking about, like I said, you know, trying to find those contracts that are going to be good size contracts are going to be able to pay more than a month worth of your expenses if possible um, or be in a place where you can run multiple missions within the course of a financial cycle so um, like every 30 days you got to make those you got to do your payroll and, and your operating expenses if you can do multiple missions even if they're only going to pay you let's say 500,000 C bills but you can do that twice a month I would be making money on that deal because I would be ma making more over the course of the month than I'm making and that I'd be spending on all my expenses. Um, that said, don't forget to keep in mind your repair and replacement and stuff. So if you've got to go replace anything, um, like go to the store and like buy a new component for something, you know, a new AC5, it's going to cost you 90 grand. Um, so, or a hundred grand by default. So just be cautious. But anyway, Pikachu and I are excited. Hope you can get your uh, mercenary unit up and running. Um, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, uh, ping me. I'm Gizmo DeVoe at Gmail. Um, drop me a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think. Like I said, I will be doing something about the loadouts. Um, like I said, if I do that, then I will post something. Um, it'll also be an end card to, to go to that. Um, if you haven't checked out the history stuff, please do. I've got a couple of videos. One about the um, beginning introductory movie. You know, it's kind of like, you know, what happens and why do we care? What's over what all these dates mean and who's this first Lord guy and all that stuff. Um, and then all the way through, there's another video I've got about sort of the current affairs. Like, you know, who runs each house? How are things working? What's the political climate within the inner sphere um, again not that it matters a whole lot because you can't go beyond this little periphery space that we are 
um, which is the southern side of the the, uh, the inner sphere map. If you were to look at it, it was positioned north, south, east, west, um, cardinally. But um, I'm very hopeful that Harebrained is going to um, open up the rest of the map so that we can just kind of go wherever the hell we want to go and do whatever we want to do and just be fine with that. Um, that's the part that I'm looking forward to. That's the part I want to do. The rest of this hanging out in the periphery, not exciting. Hanging out with House Liao, I'm not excited about. Um, it's like my least favorite house of all five. Um, and the Fed Sons one sucks. The Fed's, Fed Sons systems suck, I think. And the Marek or Fed, uh, Free Worlds ones are okay. Liao is where all the cool stuff is. I don't want to become good friends with Liao right now. Um, but that's just me. Anyway, hope you had a good time. Uh, hope you learned some stuff. And I hope that this has been valuable for you. Like I said, drop me a line or dro drop a comment if there's anything that you have questions about or any um, uh, questions or something that I might have gotten wrong. Uh, please let me know so that I can go investigate it and find out. Um, I, I want to make sure I'm giving you guys accurate information, but I also make sure I'm trying to give you stuff that's going to help you be a better mercenary commander, but also manage it so you're not going to go bankrupt in the first, you know, three months of your um, of your contracts. So uh, take care. Pikachu and I are excited. I'm hoping that you're going to uh, pick up the game if you haven't already, that you're going to play it. You're going to love it. Uh, again, I think this is the game that Battletech fans, the board game fans have been waiting for for 30 years. Um, this is, this is fabulous. I love it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. So take care. Cheers. And, um, uh, hope you have a, an awesome evening. Take care. We'll see you on the other side until then. Cheers.